of you. Here's a British import series on PBS that began last year. We're in the second season this year. It's a cool series. It's set at the time of in the teens, time of Titanic. It's an Edwardian family, basically. It's a, it's a cool show. I mention it because in the first episode, in fact, the first scene of the first episode, of the first season, it's set in April of 1912. And the opening scene is a telegram coming to the family to tell them Titanic has gone down. It matters to that family because they have two relatives on the ship, one of whom is to be the heir uh, to the estate, so it matters to them. You find out at breakfast, and as they're sitting there and Lord Grantham reads the Marconi gram, he tells the family what's happened. They're all stuck. One of his grown daughters turns to him and she says, I thought it was unsinkable. And Lord Grantham says some wise words, I think, which go like this. Every mountain is unclimbable until someone climbs it. Every ship is unsinkable until it sinks. Titanic suffers from overexposure. It's over-dramatized. It's described in superlatives, isn't it? Everything you read about Titanic, it's the biggest, the best, the most luxurious, the fastest. It doesn't come more opulent than Titanic. It's unsinkable. Wow. Who wouldn't want to go from Great Britain to Southampton to New York on that? People fought each other practically with tickets on Titanic. It was a great adventure to go on Titanic. And that word, I think, condemns a lot of people. Because when they strike the iceberg, and you tell these people, you must get off this ship, we must get into the lifeboats, lifeboats, they can't fathom what you're talking about. Wait, 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 wait. I thought it was un unsinkable. And it makes this business of a sinking Titanic unthinkable, doesn't it? They can't imagine what's going to happen. It doesn't dawn on these people for the longest time. This ship's going to sink. Now, if you look at the details, and by the way, have you, you guys study this? Have you read about this? Who's read about Titanic? Who knows some of the details? Have you at least read the cards on the tape? <laughs> have you read about the Californian? You know what happens with Titanic? All the planets wind up. They're all against the ship. How many things go wrong at the same time, on the same night, that wouldn't normally go wrong? Two men climb up in the crow's nest as lookouts, and they've forgotten one thing. Binoculars. How long could the equipment list of a lookout in the crow's nest be? <laughs> How many things are there to keep track of? Ready to go? What do we forget? Can't think of a thing. <laughs> Let's go. No binoculars. I, I, I just don't, it doesn't compute for me. And when you figure out you don't have, when you've received six notices of ice, and you're up there and you figure out, that's what we're missing, binoculars. Why don't you dash on down and get those for us? <clears throat> They're going too fast. At 22, 22 and a half knots, it's about 25 miles an hour. It's too fast. In ice, but remember, this is Titanic. It can't sink. And they've got to set a record to get to New York. They want to get there fast. In fact, they've been talking about maybe getting to New York Tuesday afternoon rather than Wednesday morning. Wouldn't that be a feather in our cap? We're going too fast. And then the California. 
what is wrong with the people on the California? Are these the most uninquisitive men on the planet? <laughs> you see this ship from 10, 20 miles tops away. You see, oh look, there's the big liner. The Marconi man says, it's Titanic. I wonder why they're not moving. It's probably the ice. What are all those rockets? <laughs> Fireworks for 18 rockets. 18 white distress rockets. Look at the rockets. <laughs> I wonder what that means. Should we call the captain? Let's try more slang. Titanic can't see that. Titanic seized California. Why don't they do something? Why aren't they responding? We're shooting off rockets left and right, and they're just sitting there. And you know what the big problem was? The Marconi man goes to sleep. Because Marconi <laughs> men have to go to sleep eventually. There's only one on, on, on California. You're not required to have 24-hour radio going. He's got to go to bed sometime. He goes to bed. There's an officer on the ship who's intrigued by Morse code. He comes down and asks the radio guy, can I use the set? Can I listen in? Sure. Do you know Morse code? No, I get about every one, you know, one or three words right make it. He puts the headset on. Nothing. He doesn't know you're supposed to wind up the dynamo. Because if you wound up the dynamo and put on the headset, even if you don't know that many letters, you at least know S, O, oh, and there's that letter S again. You at least can read that. You hear all the rockets. You watch the rockets. Does nobody think maybe somebody should wake up the Morse code guy? Maybe somebody should wake up the Marconi man. Just check and make sure this ship is okay. It seems to be sitting in the water a little queerly. <laughs> What's wrong with these guys? We can tisk this all night. What I want to talk about is people. Here's what I've come up with on people. You know the scenario. It's repeated over and over and over again. Man and a woman, husband and wife, man and his sweetheart. Those kinds of combinations. A lot of what you are tonight, and the word is only the women and children in the boats. This has moved so slowly, they're not really even taking this very seriously. A lot of these women just in that little boat. That's all right. Why should I leave this grand, great ship and get in that flimsy little thing? Bob, what are you thinking? I'm not going to do that. So here's what these guys have to do. They have to con convince the woman in their life, you must get on that boat. Not because we're going to sink. It's going to be, okay, you see the problem here? They can't tell what they're figuring out because eventually most of these people are going to be figuring out, oh yeah, we are going to sink. Despite what the steward has said repeatedly, we're going to sink. And so here are these guys who have to tell their spouses, their mothers, their girlfriends, their daughters, it's going to be okay, we need to get in the lifeboat. It's just a precaution. I'll get on another boat. What they can't say is, we're going to sink. You have to get on that boat. Because if they say that, what happens? She's going to say what? I'm not going to go without you. You can't make it. They have to say this so they will convince these women it's going to be okay. I'll get on the boat, we'll see each other later, this is just an inconvenience. And you understand, don't you, what that requires you to do? 
what it requires these men to do? They can't say what they want to say. They can't say, I'm not going to make it. <coughs> you are. And this would be great. <coughs> I want you to be married. Don't forget me. You see what there's what's going on here? You can't say how you feel. You have to lie. I think that's one of the most tragic parts of this the whole thing. Because these women have to be convinced. It's going to be okay. I'll see them later. But they're not going to. We can rail about What's wrong with these people in California? We can rail about dungeon of rockets. We can rail about you're going too fast. We can rail about binoculars are gone. We can't bring anybody back. And here are these poor guys saying it's going to be. What would you do?